So the first thing we need to do is prepare the kit for installation. So cut the zip tie which secures the belt during shipping. Next, lubricate the rails with a couple of drops of TriFlow with PTFE or liquid bearings. Just put a drop or two in the side channels, then move the sled back and forth a couple of times to distribute the lubricant. A quick wipe with a paper towel will remove any excess. Install the six M4 bolts and T-nuts in the screw holes here. Now, the 3D fused Y-axis linear rail kit for the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro is a low profile replacement for the stock Y-axis. This allows the bed to sit much lower than the stock configuration. On some printer revisions, the Z-axis may not be able to go low enough even when bottomed out against the Z-axis motor mount. If this is the case with your printer, you will use this 6mm spacer and longer M4 bolts included in the kit. If your kit did not include the spacer, but you need it, contact 3D Fused and they'll get you taken care of. The Ender 3 Pro that we're installing on today does require the spacer, so you'll see it being used during the assembly process. Manually raise the Z-axis of the printer as high as it'll go. This will give you plenty of room to work while installing the kit. Unplug the Y-axis motor cable from the Y-axis stepper motor. Unplug the Y-axis limit switch cable from the Y-axis limit switch. Remove the two screws which hold the Y-axis limit switch in place. There is one above and one below the connector. Then remove the Y-axis limit switch and set it aside. Release the tension on the Y-axis belt by loosening the four screws, two on either side, of the tensioning system. And make sure that the belt is loose. Slip the belt over the gear of the Y-axis stepper motor. Remove the four screws holding the Y-axis stepper motor in place. As you remove the last screw, support the stepper motor with your hand so it doesn't fall. Then set the stepper motor aside. Turn the printer over and on its side so we can access the underside of the printer. Remove the bolts securing the Y-axis assembly to the printer frame. The Ender 3 has two bolts while the Ender 3 Pro has four. As you remove the final bolt, support the Y-axis assembly with your other hand so that it doesn't fall off. Then, while holding the Y-axis assembly in place, return the printer to its full upright and locked position. Remove the leveling knobs from the bed. Remove the bed and set it behind the printer. Then remove the Y-axis assembly and set it aside. Here we're using the spacer because this printer needs it. If yours doesn't, then don't install it. You can make things a little easier by aligning your T-nuts so they'll fit nicely into the lower extrusion on the printer's frame. We'll set the upgrade kit onto that lower extrusion. Make sure the kit sits flush against the right side Z extrusion and then get those M4 bolts and T-nuts tightened up. Once that's done, make sure that the system is firmly attached. Install the Y-axis stepper motor. Make sure the connector is facing this direction away from the power supply. We'll use the longer M3 screws provided in the kit. When you're done, make sure all the screws are tight. Then 
install the Y-axis limit switch on the Y-axis end stop slider using the two small black screws supplied with the kit. If necessary, release tension on the Y-axis belt using the tensioner in the front, then loop the belt over the gear on the Y-axis stepper motor. Connect the Y-axis stepper motor cable to the Y-axis stepper motor. Connect the Y-axis limit switch cable to the Y-axis limit switch. Tension the Y-axis belt using the tensioner at the front of the kit. Then install the bed onto the new Y carriage. Because of the low profile of the kit, you can't fully compress the bed springs. Don't let the screws protrude more than about a millimeter through the leveling knobs. Now it's time to adjust the Y-axis end stop if needed. To find out if you need to adjust it, use the control panel on the printer. Select Prepare, then select Auto Home. You may notice that the nozzle is quite far above the bed when the axes are homed. This is due to the lower profile of the 3D fused Y-axis linear rail kit. After we've adjusted the Y-axis end stop, we'll adjust the Z-axis end stop. Use the control panel to select Prepare, Move Axis, Move 10 millimeters, Move Y, and then turn the knob to move the axis to its maximum travel distance. If the belt slips or the motor grinds, when you reach the maximum position, you will need to adjust the Y-axis end stop. Here's how. Loosen, but do not remove the screw which secures the Y-axis end stop slider. Move the end stop slider toward the back of the printer a bit, then tighten the screw to hold it in place. Repeat the homing process to test the position. Repeat that until you're happy with the position of the bed both when it's homed and when it's at its maximum position. We're looking at the left side of the printer. You can see there's still quite a distance between the nozzle and the bed. We need to adjust the position of the Z end stop. We're going to loosen these two screws and then move the end stop mount downward. Loosen, but do not remove the screws securing the Z end stop mount to the printer's frame. Move the end stop down about the same distance as the nozzle is from the bed. Then tighten the screws. Next, use the control panel to home all axes. Well, that got us close but we can get closer. So we'll repeat this process until we can get the nozzle about a millimeter above the bed. Right here is a small tab which prevents the end stop mount from moving below the edge of the frame, but we need to move it below the edge of the frame. So we'll move this so it sticks out just a bit and that'll allow us to move the end stop mount lower. Then tighten the screws again and repeat the homing process. And that is much better. We've got the nozzle about a millimeter above the bed. Now we can use the bed adjustment knobs to get the distance just right for printing. So use your preferred bed leveling or tramming method to get your printer adjusted as needed.